Wickham, I think, definitely wins in terms of the worst Jane Austen suitor that you should run from as fast as you can. A lot of women who read Jane Austen novels say that she has given them unrealistic expectations for men and romance. There are a lot of really desirable, swoon-worthy guys in Jane Austen's novels. And then there are the ones that just are absolutely repulsive, and you wouldn't ever want them to marry you. And that is what this video will be focusing on. I'm going to give you my top 10 worst Jane Austen suitors. I'm going to tell you why, why they rank where they do, why they make the list in general, and we're going to talk about her least desirable men. Now, a couple of things before we get started. This will only include the suitors. So, any older men like Mr. Woodhouse from Emma, any married men like, for example, Mr. Musgrove from Persuasion, and anyone that doesn't show a romantic interest or a desire to marry will not be included. I should probably mention this video will not be spoiler-free. So if there are any of Jane Austen's novels that you haven't read and you'd like to, this video may not be for you, or you might want to come back to it later once you've read them all. Some of these guys are obviously despicable from the beginning, but some of them take a little bit longer to show their true colors. With that being said, let's get started. Number 10 on my list is Frank Churchill. Now, I have to say, I actually kind of like Frank Churchill. He's probably out of Jane Austen's bad boy characters the one that I have the most sympathy for and that I have the most respect for. Obviously, he uses Emma in a way that I don't want to try and justify. He's very deceitful, he's very manipulative, and it's just fortunate that she doesn't have any genuine feelings for him, and so no harm ultimately comes of it. But I do like that he wants to marry for love, that he doesn't care that Jane Fairfax doesn't have a good dowry, doesn't bring any money to the marriage. He basically is hiding his secret engagement to her until the older relatives that would disown him for it have passed away and then he plans to marry her. And I do find that to be a kind of sympathetic situation to be in. I feel like he intends to do right by her. It's, it's more complicated than what you see with most of Jane Austen's kind of bad boy or male villain type characters. So points to him for wanting to marry for love and not caring about her fortune, but definitely he's a little bit egotistical and selfish and manipulative. So that counts against him, that's why he makes the list. Number nine is Mr. Collins. I don't think that Mr. Collins is intentionally malicious or trying to hurt anybody. I think he has good intentions in wanting to marry one of the Bennet sisters. I think that he and Charlotte, while they have a completely loveless marriage, are relatively well suited to each other. I don't think either one of them will be very unhappy. They just won't be particularly happy either. So I think that as obnoxious and unpleasant as he is, as ridiculous as he is sometimes, compared with some of the guys who were actively trying to hurt somebody or didn't care if they did, I think that he has good intentions for the most part. Just really misguided actions and way too much obsession with Lady Catherine de Bourgh. Along a similar line, I'm going to put Mr. Rushworth at number eight. I think that Mr. Rushworth knew that Mariah Bertram was not in love with him, knew probably that she didn't have a lot of respect for him. I would think that that would be something that would be kind of difficult to hide, and I don't think she really tried to hide it. So I think that when you marry someone that you know isn't in love with you, that you know doesn't have any respect for you, you're setting yourself up for disaster. And while certainly what happens, Mariah made her choice, Henry Crawford made his choice, but I think that Mr. Rushworth is not entirely innocent and should not have been pursuing a woman that he could tell was only interested in his money. I would not want to be the object of his affections because he clearly did not care whether those affections were reciprocated. Number seven, and here's where we start to get to the ones that I really despise, John Thorpe from Northanger Abbey. I don't know that John is necessarily a bad guy so much as he is a greedy guy. He really wants to marry for money. And he seems to think that Catherine Moreland is a rich heiress and that he, if he marries her, will be marrying very, very well. And when he finds out she is the daughter of a relatively poor clergyman who does not have the kind of dowry or inheritance that he thought she did, he is very disappointed to say the least. But what really gets to me about him is the way that he reacts when he finds out that she is not interested in marrying him. Because he was very obviously flirting. 
and she was completely clueless to it. Now, I can totally identify with that. I am sometimes really clueless if a guy is interested in me. But regardless, he shouldn't have assumed that her being friendly or her not openly rejecting him was a yes. At best, it should have been interpreted as a maybe and that he would need to make his intentions a little bit more clear. He just jumps to the assumption that because she agreed that sometimes one marriage can lead to another and she did not tell him she doesn't want to marry him, that, well, that was as good as a proposal and an acceptance, right? I find that attitude really grating. Number six is Mr. Elton from Emma. Now, Mr. Elton is the one who Emma is trying to match up with Harriet Smith, but he is actually interested in Emma herself. He does not know how to take no for an answer, which you'll find is a common trait among some of these guys. When Emma makes it clear that she was trying to match him up with Harriet and didn't actually have any interest in, in him for herself, he reacts pretty badly. And then, to follow up on that, he really is cruel to Harriet afterwards. Even once he is married and clearly there is no potential of them getting together, he snubs her at the dance, and I just find that to be, like, so unnecessarily cruel. So he definitely makes the list. The reason that he's not higher up on the list is that some of these guys just go way further in terms of being despicable and in terms of the way that they treat women that they're not seriously considering as a partner. Number five is Mr. Elliot from Persuasion. Mr. Elliot is Anne's cousin and her sister Elizabeth actually hoped to marry him because, don't you know, cousin marriages were considered just totally fine at the time. He's not interested in Elizabeth, he's interested in Anne. He seems to genuinely like her the best out of the sisters, but he's not just interested in her as a person, he's interested in inheriting her father's title. He is the heir to the Elliot family's estate and noble title, which is entailed much like the Bennett families, and he thinks that if he marries Sir Elliot's daughter, then Sir Elliot will make sure to not have a son and to allow him to inherit that. He also is courting the woman who Sir Elliot might remarry to, and he's promising to make her his mistress just as soon as he's married to Anne. So, you know, great guy, right? However, now we've gotten to the territory where men are actively destroying women's reputations and do not care about it. Number four on the list is Captain Tilney from Northanger Abbey. Captain Tilney is the eldest son, and he has a habit of running off with women and then ditching them and ruining their reputations and suffering no consequences for it himself. Now, the woman that we see him do this with is Isabella Thorpe who is really not a very likable character herself. Like her brother John, who we discussed earlier, she is interested in marrying for money. First, she goes after Catherine's brother, thinking that he will inherit a lot of money. When she finds out, no, he'll be living off of a poor clergyman's salary, she ditches him and goes for Captain Tilney. Captain Tilney, though, has no interest in marrying a girl without a dowry, and he abandons her, and presumably that kind of ruins the rest of her life, because in those days, a woman who had run off with a man, who had presumably slept with a man, and then did not get married to said man, didn't really have a lot of options. Number three on this list is Henry Crawford. And I know there are people who feel about him the way that I feel about Frank Churchill. Kind of a bad boy, but ultimately kind of likable and sympathetic in spite of that. However, I really can't stand Henry Crawford. I think that his attitude toward the heroine, Fanny, is just absolutely repulsive. Now, the fact that he kind of falls for her and wants to change himself for her, that's cool. That's fine. I'm not really one for the cliche of the bad boy who changes for the good girl, but I know that some people like it, and I can deal with it when it's done well. The problem is how he reacts when she says no, because he just doesn't want to take no for an answer, does he? Like many of the guys on this list, it just kind of makes me feel ultimately like he sees her as a prize to be won, a possession to be earned, not as a person who can make her own choices. I feel like if you really love someone and you know that they don't want to be with you, you will be sad, but you will wish them well in the future. It makes me think of what Darcy said when he proposed to Elizabeth for the second time. 
He said, one word from you will silence me on this matter forever. He was asking again because he could tell that her feelings might have changed, but he also didn't want her to feel obligated or to keep pushing it if she still felt the way that she had when she first rejected him. We don't see any of that from Henry. We just see this assumption that of course she will want him because who wouldn't? And we see that from the other people around her as well. There's a lot of just shock that she would turn him down. So I feel for her in that situation and I'm a little bit disgusted with him even before we get to the part where he's seducing a married woman. I'm sure you can guess who the top two are and you would be right, but let's talk about why they rank where they do in comparison to each other. Willoughby and Wickham are both womanizers and they both really do wrong by the women they encounter. However, Willoughby ranks number two and Wickham ranks number one. And the reason for that is that Willoughby has somewhat of a heart. It's not enough to overcome his bad traits. I certainly am not wanting to excuse him or say that, you know, he was really a good guy deep down. He was not, but he did love Marianne. And if money hadn't been a factor, and if the thing with Eliza hadn't happened, I think that Willoughby would have married Marianne and would have tried to do right by her. I don't think he would have been faithful to her, but I think he would have cared about her reputation and her happiness. And Wickham, I'm not convinced, is capable of being in love with anyone. Certainly not with any of the women he encounters that he flirts with or that he seduces. He really does not care about the impact he has on anyone's life and the only thing that matters to him is money and he doesn't even know how to manage that very well because he's always in debt. Wickham I think definitely wins in terms of the worst Jane Austen suitor that you should run from as fast as you can. What are your thoughts? Which Jane Austen suitors would you not want to marry? Would you agree with my ranking or would you rank them differently? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post about classic literature, reading, writing, study tips, college tips, and more.